Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to answer the age-old question. Which came first, the chicken or the egg? One of the hardest things for a father is when it comes time to send his little girl off to college. Biology? Did you get caiman? Complex life forms evolved from simpler life forms. Hey, what did you think about what Professor Caiman was just saying? She's one of the cutest freshmen you've seen. Just calling to get your topic for the October debate. I really like all of my instructors, especially my biology teacher, Professor Kamen. He would riot. The guy's an evolutionist, and there's nothing in the whole course description about biblical creation as even a plausible alternative. All our public schools and universities teach evolution as the answer to the origins of life. Don't you think Professor Kamen has some good concepts? He could be right. Have you ever seen that thing that Kamen does where he shows how we all came from apes? Life comes from life. It doesn't come from non-life. Evolution versus creationism. What do you say? Professor Kamen, my dad can't debate you. If I were you, I'd get out of it. I've never done anything like this before. I wasn't going to teach evolutionary lies from those textbooks. I'm out of the game. You debating Professor Kamen is not going to solve anything. This guy stands against everything that we believe in. What are you doing? Man? What did you tell him? I'm not interested. Do you know how embarrassing this is going to be for me? Welcome everyone to our debate tonight. Wasn't the Bible written by man? Yes, it was. Then how does that make it the word of God? And you do believe in your viewpoint, don't you? Hey guys, I apologize in advance if there's any issues with the audio or video. Um, I did notice the video seems to be going dark and going light. Um, again, I'm still working with a lot of my new equipment and working with new software, so um, I apologize for any issues that might come up. Um, but anyway, let me get right into this. So I watched a movie yesterday on Netflix called A Matter of Faith, and I wanted to do a review on this absolute travesty of a movie. Um, so basically the synopsis of this movie is the the dad you have a Christian family um, and you have a daughter in the family who's going off to college and the dad does a going off to college party for her now I know not everybody does things the same way but um, usually I would have thought that would have been kind of included in the college graduation party you know, or sorry the high school graduation party you graduate from high school, um, you're going off to college, you know, people get the whole party together all at once. But hey, you know, different people do different things different ways. Um, but as the movie progresses, you know, she goes to college, she gets her roommate, um, the dad puts $50 in the Bible, you know, to see if she'll read it. Um, there was, and the daughter goes on and she is in her biology class. And uh, while she's in her biology class, lo and behold, um, the professor starts teaching about evolution. Um, but what the professor does is he has people raise their hand. He's like, you know, do you think the egg came first or the chicken came first? Um, and he explains, well, you know, we know from the fossil record that the egg came first and that, um, and that higher life forms like the chicken developed from lower life forms like the egg. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. Like, that's that's not what evolution is. And it's like, I'm not a supporter of evolution. I, I believe in creation. Um, but this, this was terrible. This was really terrible. Um, I, I would have hoped that the people would have at least said, okay, we're going to read a book, um, Evolution for First Graders or something, and said, okay, here's what evolution is. Um, let's talk so we can talk about it in the movie um, or watch a five-minute YouTube video um, There's some great YouTube videos out there. Uh, maybe I'll put some in the comments box explaining what evolution is explaining how it's supposed to work um, But again, like I said, this is not an idea that I agree with um, Because I don't think it stands up to the science of biology when we actually look at the evidence um, But anyway the move as the movie progresses the dad comes to find out Oh my gosh they're teaching evolution in this college um, in her biology class and I'm sitting here like what wh what planet are you from like how how does the dad not know that she's going to be learning about evolution in school um, like <sighs> 
apologize, the camera made me turn orange there for a second. Um, like, how, how does this happen? Like, how, how do you have, like, have, like, does he not own a television? Does he not, like, ever, never read a book? You know, has, has he ever been outside of his house? Ever. Um, so, yeah, so he's complaining, oh my gosh, you know, she's, a teach she's learning about evolution in her biology class. And you come to find out, well, what's her major? Her major's biology. And he says, yeah, we wanted to send her to a Christian school. Um, but, you know, they had a good bi a good biology program here and she wants to be a pharmacist. So um, we sent her off to this particular college. Now, honestly, somebody can learn biology just about anywhere. Um, any college that has a science curriculum, you can probably major in biology. Um, it's a very, very common major. It's um, colleges that teach biology are a dime a dozen. So. Um, that doesn't make any sense. And also, if, yeah, if she's a biology major, she's going to learn about evolution, and she should. You know, even though I don't agree that evolution is true, you should learn it. Um, I think everybody should learn it. High school students should learn it. Um, so this dad has this problem, and he goes and, I apologize, like this webcam is still giving me issues. If it keeps doing this, I'm just going to switch to the other camera. Um, but yeah, the dad is having these issues, and he confronts the professor. He says oh, well, I have a problem with you teaching evolution in this class, and the professor challenges him to a debate. Because um, the professor was had to do a debate um, on some topic because it was part of something he had to do. And he couldn't find a debate partner, and he's like, you know, why don't I debate this crazy dad about creation versus evolution? Um, so, none of, not, again, none of this makes any sense. Um, this was a very the few clips you did have of the professor teaching biology i'm like the the level that he's talking um this is not something that he would be explain that he would be even if it were correct the whole ch what he was saying about the chicken and the egg you know saying the chickens evolved from eggs um the way he was talking the level he was explaining the wrong ideas um this is something that would be like in a biology 101 course. If she were majoring in biology, she wouldn't be taking um, this particular course. She'd be taking a higher level biology course where she'd be reading real textbooks from a real professor and the professor wouldn't be going, well, if you show up to class every day, I'll give you a C, even if you fail all the tests. Like this, this is not realistic. It would not happen. Um, I apologize, guys. I'm going to switch to this other camera. Anyway, yeah, I just switched cameras and turned off this light. Again, I'm uh, playing with some new equipment here, so uh, thanks for being patient. Um, so, yeah, this person is majoring in biology at a secular university especially, um, and the dad is shocked that she's hearing about evolution, and oh my gosh, she's not learning about creation. Um, yeah, so the, the entire premise of the movie was terrible, it was dumb, and there were all of like 10 people at this university um, as she goes off to college, I think it was really kind of the stereotype um, that, that Christians have about college. Um, so she goes to college, you know, every time she sits down to study, somebody is like, oh, come have this party with us. And, oh, go, and you know what, that part's actually, you know what, that part's actually realistic. You sit down, you study, and your, your roommate invites you to come out and go drinking with them even though you probably have a test the next day or whatever. Of course, I mean, that's that seems like typical college. Um, and people rarely have the maturity and the fortitude to say no. Um, so they end up getting C's in their class instead of an A. By the way, no, this did not happen to me because, but it similar things happened, just not that particular thing because I don't go to drinking parties. Um, college, I went to one and there was the only person actually drinking there was the person who invited everybody and literally everybody else turned down the beer which was interesting um but anyway they were nice people um but yeah so this the entire thing is oh my gosh you know, she's going off to college she's learning about evolution and learning these terrible arguments for evolution and her, she's like oh my gosh you know my faith I don't remember the character's name. I don't care. I'm going to call her Jennifer. 
So Jennifer is sitting there in class like, oh my gosh, she said that the egg came before the chicken? Um, I don't know what to do. I don't, um, and there's kind of this, you know, do I still believe in God? And then, of course, you have the male hero who, you know, because there's always, you know, a damsel in distress in Christian movies. And don't get me wrong, like, I have no, no problem with a damsel in distress, but um, some of the female characters in these Christian movies could have a little more volition. Um, and that's not, you know, this whole feminist thing. That's just that you are an adult, you are a human being. Um, you know, think for yourself somewhat, stand up for yourself somewhat. So you have the, uh, you have a couple... You have several male college students who, um, I, I thought it was interesting how so many of the male college students were, were quite striking looking, um, and very, very well groomed for this particular movie. Um, and maybe that's to its credit, you know, people should look good in movies, you know, up to a point. Um, but yeah, so you had, you know, the male college student coming up to her who was uh, trying to seduce her, and then you had this other guy who's a Christian who's the hero. Um, the, you can tell who's who, I guess, because the Christian guy has, you know, a slight beard. Um, not that that's what made him stand out, but I'm sorry, guys. This, 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 movie, this movie was terrible, and it's hard to explain. So you have the one guy trying to seduce her and the other guy trying to save her soul. Um... And it was, it was a mess. Like, the entire thing was a mess. Um, there really was very little that was redeeming about this movie. Um, the message was terrible. Um, there was almost nothing in the movie about creation versus evolution. Um, the arguments were, were, on both sides, were, made no sense. Um, at one point you had the Christian come up to somebody in the library and go, Does your mother look like an ape? And it's like, how dare you say this? He's like, does your grandmother look like an ape? It's like, what's your problem? It's like, I'll take that as a no. And it's like, nobody was an ape all the way back to Adam and Eve. And because apes come from apes and people come from people. And, okay, well, I will agree, you know, the apes come from apes and people come, I'll agree with that statement, but it's not an argument. It's not a... It's not a valid presentation of your case. Um, nothing in the movie was well done. And I think that if somebody watches this, they're going to come away saying these Christians are idiots. They don't understand evolution. Um, and they don't have any real argument for creation. And you know what? They would be right to say that we're stupid for this. Um, and I, I would hope that they would look elsewhere besides just this movie. But... Um, if Christians, if you, if we are promoting this, people have the right to view us as stupid. Um, they, we really, really do. Um, I don't care who's, I make these videos, I'm truthful. Um, somebody might say, oh, well, I thought the movie was sweet, I thought the characters were nice. Okay, fine. Um, we can say the movie is sweet and nice, but there was no substance to it. Um, and it really did an injustice, um, to both film and to the creation movement, I think, because this, it was so poorly presented. Um, you know, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to pause myself for a second. And I'm going to play a clip for you, um, showing you this clip that I just talked about so you can see how bad it is. Um, so watch this, you know, he comes up to you, you know, was your mother, does, does your mother look like an ape? You know, does your grandmother look like an ape? And, you know, then the other guy, so like, oh my gosh, this argument's so strong, and he walks away looking defeated. Watch this. It is, it is, it's a travesty against logic. It's a human rights violation. Hey, uh, I'll catch up with you later. Uh, excuse me. Your dad's the guy that's going to debate Cayman, right? Why do you ask? I'm in your bio class. Why would anyone want to debate Cayman? He doesn't. I don't want him to. Have you ever seen that thing that Cayman does where he shows how we all came from apes? Pardon? How we all came from apes. What is it? How do you know? It's dead after class. One day, I heard him go through it. <laughs> He'll make your father look like a complete idiot with that example. Look, I told you I don't want him to do it. Excuse me. Couldn't help it over here. Are you talking about Professor Cayman when he goes through his routine about how we all came from apes? Yeah. Have you seen it? 
Yeah, I've seen it. I thought it was great. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Does your mother look like an ape? What'd you say? Does your mother look like an ape? Watch it, man. I'll assume that's a no. How about your grandmother? Does she look like an ape? What? Man, who are you? I'll take that as another no. So your mother doesn't look like an ape, and neither does your grandmother. How about your great-grandmother? Do pictures go that far back in your family? Does she look like an ape? What's your deal, man? Cayman says we all come from apes, so which one in your family was the monkey? I got news for you. You can take it all the way back to the very first man and woman, Adam and Eve. And guess what? No one was ever an ape. You know why? Because apes come from apes, and humans come from humans. Now, who's going to make who look like a complete idiot? I don't need you to defend me. I wasn't defending you. Alright, for those of you who don't get the slight historical reference, which you, most people probably wouldn't, there was a debate in the 1800s following the Origin of Species where it was supposedly asked, um, where Samuel Wilberforce, the son of William Wilberforce, the famous abolitionist, supposedly asked Thomas Huxley whether he was descended from apes through his grandmother or grandfather. Um, now this is something that people are commonly told as historical fact, um, but there's no evidence that it ever actually happened. Um, the only historical reference we have to it is from a tabloid newspaper from several decades after the event. Um, but anyway, so going back to the movie, um, we have it where there's this terrible argument. Well, does your mom look like an ape? Does your grandma look like an ape? Um, well, I got news for you. All the way back to Adam and Eve, we we're all people. Okay, yeah, this is called begging the question. We are you. This is the the fallacy of begging the question. I probably have a video. I know I've made videos talking about this, but this is this is not a. This is not a valid. Um, this is not this this is not an argument. This is not logic. And then the guy walks away like, "Oh my gosh, what a strong argument! I'm totally defeated." Um, like I said, this is a mess, and I think that when Christians make movies like these and when they do things like this, it does a huge disservice to um, the Christian community. Um, now, this movie had glowing reviews on Answers in Genesis. Um, which I'm quite disappointed by because you go to the Creation Museum, you look at the stuff published by Answers in Genesis, and it's grade A. It's very, very high caliber. And so I think they should have been more honest with people and more honest with themselves and recognize that this movie's um, intellectual caliber is absolutely terrible. Um, there was no, there was pretty much no substance throughout the entire movie. Um, now, if you're afraid of me ruining the ending, um, you can feel free to stop the video here, um, pause it, maybe come back to it. But, I mean, at the end, you end up having it where there's this, uh, you find out the professor had gotten a, another biology professor fired 12 years earlier for, um, for teaching creation. Um, now this guy, he got fired, he's like, oh, well, I was, he was teaching creation instead of evolution. And it's like, no, um, if... I personally think the best way to educate people is, you know, to um, teach the arguments of scientists on all sides of a debate. However, um, I w don't want to make that law, and most creationist organizations, they'll say, we don't want to make this law. We don't want to make it where um, you have a law where teachers have to teach about creation, because as it is, textbooks, um, evolutionary textbooks uh, in high schools and bio and uh, college classes um, do talk about creation, but they lie about it. Um, my evolutionary biology textbook, for example, from when I was in college, um, which was for a course called evolutionary biology. So this is a higher level course um, for, you know, more advanced students. This is not, this is not a freshman course. Um, in that textbook, they claimed that creationists deny that species change over time. This is a bold-faced lie. Um, the author, I shouldn't, let me step back. The author was either lying or mistaken. However, at what point, um, 
at what point do you say, hey, you know, um, they're mistaken about their intellectual point opponents? And at what point is it like, hey, you know, this is intellectual laziness? And it's intellectual laziness on par with the intellectual laziness of this stupid movie. Um, but anyway, back back to the movie, you know, so you had this creationist professor of biology who got fired and, you know, that happens. You know, the expelled, you know, documents that pretty well with intelligent design advocates. Um, you know, God forbid you go, you know, 20 steps further and say the earth is young. Um, but th this this was a mess. I don't think any biologist who is a creationist would ever say, don't teach evolu about evolution, because they want students to know evolution, and they want students to know evolution better than what evolutionists want students to know. Um, you know, because it's one thing to understand a theory or understand an idea, because I can't even really call evolution a theory. It's one thing to understand an idea just enough to accept it. It's another thing to understand it well enough where you can analyze it and you can look at the arguments about this idea from all perspectives. Um, I can I think of communist China where um, the historically, like what, what were you allowed to learn? You were allowed to learn about communism, not allowed to hear any criticism of communism. I don't know if that's still the same way today because I know that um, things have changed somewhat, but um, you think of the Nazis where they would, you know, get rid of any opposition to the Nazi ideology, which was evolutionary. Um, you know, same with the communist ideology. Um, and you, you know, so you, you've had this re these regimes in history that only wanted to, th to teach things one way, only wanted to hear one perspective of things. And I really do think people should hear multiple perspectives. Um, it's just really sad because biology students think that they are hearing the creationist side and what they're really hearing is straw man arguments from their professors. Um, so they're hearing these these things that aren't what creationists actually argue. Um, they're hearing, oh, creationists deny that species change over time. And no, they don't. They, and they never have. Even Darwin, um, in, in talking about his intellectual opponents, acknowledged that they believe that species change. It wasn't about whether or not species change. It was about how much. Um, but anyway, as, as the movie continues, you end up having this debate between these two professors um initially it's the the dad this you know idiot dad who didn't know that um his daughter was going to learn about evolution being a biology major um and initially he got up on stage to debate with this professor this phd biologist um after preparing all month to for this debate um and you know the biologist is just mocking him and like there's these terrible arguments and people are like ah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ha. you know all laughing on cue because you know stage laughs um and it, it was it was a mess it was a mess like that clip i showed you will show you how much of a mess it was um and but eventually when you do get these two professors up there um the one professor says you know what you claimed about experiments proving that life could uh could have arisen naturally um those experiments didn't show that life could arise naturally so it showed that certain organic chemicals could be created in a test tube um but even that required an intelligent design. Um, I'll, I'll give I'll give that particular part of the movie a D. I'll give the rest of the movie an F. Um, and the only reason this is getting a D is because it's like, okay, um, you said life didn't actually form in a test tube. Um, but they didn't explain that this that the Miller Urea experiment, they didn't even use the name, um, was a very complex experiment. And you had it where, okay, you had this system where amino acids were forming. Um, but they had to have a special apparatus to separate the amino acids out so they wouldn't be destroyed by the experiment itself. Um, so it's like, okay, yeah, you created amino acids and then you refined them out. Um, and even then, what you got was very small amounts. So, I mean, the entire the entire Miller-Urey experiment was a mess. Um, and it's something that I do want to talk about in more detail in later videos. Um, I've talked about it a little bit before, but I would love to talk about it in more detail later on. Um, but honestly, I want the hour and a half of my life back. I, I don't think this movie is worth watching. It was terrible. Um, it's one of those movies that maybe you'll watch if you want to truly watch something terrible. Um, now, a few other comments I want to talk about. Um, 
a lot of times Christians will say, oh, well, you know, that movie wasn't all that great, but it was low budget. This movie did not suffer so much from a low budget as it did from lazy writing. Um, and I've seen Christian movies before. I think I've seen some from the Cristiano Brothers that were really good that I enjoyed. Um, this, and it's just kind of hard to remember which ones are which. Uh, this was not a good movie. This was the the terribleness of this movie um, cannot be accounted for by um, by low budget or bad acting. Um, this was laziness. Uh, this was wrong. This was morally incorrect. Um, when you bring something before God and you create a project like this, you're supposed to bring your best before God. And honestly, I, I think that most people who have any experience writing could have written a better script in a weekend or at least in a week. You know, so take a week, write a proper script. Stop telling the world that we Christians are stupid. Stop telling the world that you think evolution is a chicken evolved from an egg. Oh, okay, like just stop with this this horribleness. Um, you know what? As a Christian, I have my background is in science. But I've also been doing creative writing, and I have two short stories published on Amazon. Um, one's called Whisper, one's called uh, Dark Swim. They're both by G.S. Muse, G dot S dot M U S E. Um, and I've talked about those in previous videos. When I put those out there, I had a lot, I had some help at the end editing them. I had some beta reading, um, and I, I didn't check the spelling and grammar as much as I probably should have, but I at least made sure I had a decent story. Um, this was not a decent story and I've, I was re I was kind of alerted to this problem in Christian movies from a YouTube video, which pointed out that, Hey, you know, it's not a budget issue. And they were comparing Christian films to other low budget films and showing, um, how you have the establishing shot with a camera where it's very wide angle. So you see two people in a restaurant, so you get the context of what's going on and then you zoom in on them. And so you're just focusing on their conversation. And as the conversation gets more intense, you might zoom in closer on their faces. And then, you know, as the uh, conversation, which conversation should be written as battle, um, com or dialogue as battle, I should say, um, as this kind of uh, resolves itself um, and comes to, comes full circle, then you kind of zoom out again. But they were showing that in Christian movies, generally that's not what's done, it's just this guy was just person A, person B, person A, person B. Um, and usually the dialogue's terrible, usually the acting's terrible, and that's that's fine. I mean, you know, if, if the acting doesn't have to be grade A to have a good movie. You know, I still watch the old Star Trek. Acting was all right. Um, a lot of things were cheesy. Um, you can tell that's a puppet with somebody's hand in it. Um, you can probably see the zipper in the back of the lizard man suit. Um, but you know what? They told good stories. A lot of these Christian films, though, they're not telling good stories. Um, they are, they're just not. They're not telling good stories. Um, and what they're doing is, is not correct. Um, it, it's, it's not correct. It is not okay to be putting together these movies and telling the world that we're stupid. Telling the world that oh, the Christian uh, belief is just a matter of faith. You know, it's just that I believe something blindly. Do you know why I believe the Christian faith? I think the Christian faith is objectively true, and I think that that evidence is available to everyone. Um, I know that a lot of Christian apologetics is really steeped into presuppositionalism these days, um, and presuppositions and worldview glasses, like, that's, that's all fine, but that's not an excuse for rejecting Christianity. And I think that we, we've made that into an excuse, whereas Romans 1 says, because of the evidence men are without excuse that god has made himself so clear that you can you can have the wrong worldview glasses on and you can you still should be able to see the world that your worldview is wrong you know even an atheist um is morally morally obligated to be able to recognize that two plus two equals four um, they're morally obligated to have basic logic um and i look at the evidence out there and it does not fit with evolution. It's far better with creation. Um, there's a few things that evolutionists will be like, oh, look at this. It fits with evolution. 
therefore it's evidence for evolution. Um, but in science, that's, that's not how it works. Like, oh, well, because humans and chimps have a similar uh, bone structure in their hand, all oh, that means we're very similar. Um, or people say, oh, humans and chimps have 98% the DNA of their DNA the same. Uh, that proves that we're related. Actually, they don't have 98% of their DNA the same. That's just plain not true. Um, but anyway, let me find a... You know, the chimp genome is about 12% larger, actually, which should be a 12% difference right off the bat. Um, there is a quote that I want to read to you guys. Here. This is from Stephen Jay Gould. Um, it's from 2002. Um, and Stephen Jay Gould was considered the greatest paleontologist of the 20th century. I'm going to quote this verbatim, and this quote's actually going to be included in an upcoming video. Paleontologists therefore came to view stasis as just another failure to document evolution. Stasis existed in overwhelming abundance as every paleontologist always knew. Stasis means that uh, living things in the fossil record stay essentially the same. Uh, but this primary signal of the fossil record, defined as an absence of data for evolution, only highlighted our frustration and certainly did not represent anything worth publishing. Paleontology, therefore, fell into a literally absurd, vicious cycle. No one ventured to document or quantify, indeed, hardly anyone even bothered to mention or publish at all, the most common pattern in the fossil record, the stasis of most morpho species throughout their geological duration. All paleontologists recognized the phenomenon, a few scientists write papers about failure to, do, to document a desired result. As a consequence, most non-paleontologists never learned about the predominance of stasis and simply assumed that gradualism must prevail. Gradualism is basically Darwin's um, idea of how evolution works. As illustrated by the exceedingly rare cases that became textbook classics, he puts classics in quotations, the coiling of Graffaea, um, the increasing body size of horses, etc. By the way, Graffaea, from what I read, were a type of invertebrate that I'm actually not very familiar of, familiar with, but I do know what a horse is. Um, interestingly, nearly all of these classics have since been disproved, thus providing another testimony for the temporary triumph of hope and expectation over evidence. C. Gould, 1972. So he references, he references himself in his paper from 1970, or something he wrote in 1972. Um, Thus, when punctuated equilibrium finally granted theoretical space and importance to stasis, and this fundamental phenomenon finally emerged from the closet, non-paleontologists were often astounded and incredulous. Meyer, 1992, page 32, wrote, for example, of all the claims made in the punctuationalist theory of Eldridge and Gould, the one that encountered the greatest opposition was the observation of pronounced stasis as the unusual fate of most species, after having completed the phase of origination. I agree with Gould that the frequency of stasis in fossil species revealed by the recent analysis was unexpected by most evolutionary biologists. So what's being said here? Basically, I'm not messing with you guys. This is this is what's being said. Um, Gould is explaining that basically from the fossil record, you're not seeing the evidence for evolution. Now he'll he denies that this is what he was saying elsewhere. So he's saying, you know, how dare creationists quote me? And it's like, you said it. Um, and other people say, well, you're quoting Gould out of context. Um, you know, you're cherry picking. You're quote mining. Um, I bought I bought a bunch of these books with these quotes. Um, I looked at the quote in full. I quoted a much larger portion just now than what is usually quoted. And when you quote the larger portion, the case against evolution, I mean, evolution just gets more buried. Um, you know, no, no pun intended. Um, basically what he's saying, the fossil record does not support evolution. Um, it's not what you'd expect given any sort of Darwinian evolution. Therefore, Gould created this theory with uh, another scientist called punctuated equilibrium. And what that theory says is, well, evolution happens here and there in rapid spurts, and then you pretty much stay the same. Therefore, you don't see the evidence for it in the fossil record. 
So basically what you have is you have no evidence for your first theory, therefore you have to create this other theory out of thin air um, to explain why there's no evidence for the first theory. Um, and you have no evidence for, you really don't have any evidence for either of these theories in the first place. So, I mean, my background, I've done so much biochemistry, I've done so much like molecular biology. Um, my degree is biotechnology and molecular bioscience. Um, it's a bachelor's of science. I have sat there painstakingly mapping out data points and then drawing the curve, and that's your theory. That is not what we see um, with evolution in the fossil record. The fossil record does not support this. Um, and people have tried to say, okay, well, now we have the molecular phylo phylogeny and all that. And that's stuff I could talk about in another video. But, I mean, with this video, they this movie, they could have had some quotes. They could have had more substance. Even if it was, you know, a few things here and there that I still would have been like, okay, I think they could have done better, but at least they had something. Um, this whole thing was a mess. There was no substance to this, and the whole th only thing it did, the only thing it accomplished is made Christians look like idiots. And showed that, hey, these Christians are fundamentalist hicks who don't know anything about evolution. Which was my problem with Christians before I got saved. And, you know what, now I have, now I have two science degrees, um, you know, so it's, you know, I'm very proud of that associate's degree because that was hard. Um, and I have my bachelor's of science also. Um, and so, it, I, I am a Christian. I've looked at the data. I've looked at my books. I've heard both sides very intensively. Um, objectively, the evidence does not support evolution. This is not even a diff the only reason somebody could believe in evolution is they have a die-hard uh, religious support of it. Um, or they just haven't properly looked at the data, which is unfortunately the case for most scientists. Most scientists have not looked at the evidence. They've not heard all sides of things. All they've heard is what they've been told in their textbooks um, and the misrepresentations they heard from their biology professor about opposing views. Um, and then, of course, you know, their ignorant Aunt Sally. Um, no, guys, I don't actually have an Aunt Sally. Um, they'll hear, you know, some ignorant Christian say, oh, evolution says we came from an egg. Or they'll be asked, oh, well, uh, why don't we see monkeys evolving into people today? Or why do we still see monkeys? These are ignorant arguments and should never be used. They're stupid. Um, and this movie was stupid. Um, and I rarely, I rarely say that about a piece of artwork. This artwork was stupid. It, it should never have been made. Um, anyway, that is my, that is my rant. Um, going forward, how, what should Christians do? What should have been done differently here? This movie could have had intellectual rigor. It could have really brought up questions. It could really have, um, it could really have been something. Um, the background interactions between the characters were, some of them were terrible for a movie, but I mean, it's... Is something that could have been worked with. Um, especially after having decades of experience of making movies as the Cristiano brothers do. Um, it could have had more intellect to it. What should Christians do going forward? Um, going forward, we need to make things of substance. Our art should not be lazy. It should be something that's brought before God. It should not be a sermon disguised as a movie. If you want to have a movie with a message, that's great. Um, if you want to have a sermon in an illustrative format, fine. You know, say that that's what it is. Um, but don't do these idiotic, non nonsense things that we have here. Don't do that. And you know, guys, I'm not going to apologize because this really was stupid and it really was idiotic. Um, you know, a lot of you know Christians are going to quote Bible verses at me. You know, don't call your brother a fool. That's that's not. That's not the point of what's being done here. What's being done here is calling a spade a spade and saying, you know what, this work that we're bringing before God is terrible. It's not acceptable. We're bringing a three-legged lamb before God. Um, if you get the Old Testament reference, you were, when you brought a lamb before God, it was supposed to be perfect. It's supposed to be without blemish. Um, artwork isn't ever really going to be without blemish, but it should not be this lazy. It should not be this terrible. Going forward... 
what we need is stuff that has intellectual rigor and stuff that is good artwork. Um, the stuff that you've seen me publish, I mean, it's it's within a Christian worldview, but ultimately it's stuff that I write for myself, and to glor I write it to glorify God, but I write it in glorifying God, I'm being myself. So I'm sitting there saying, okay, how do I make good art and bring and do make these beautiful things, which ultimately glorifies my creator. Just like when I'm in a lab, if I'm doing research or if I'm doing uh, my work, um, I'm trying to glorify, I'm trying to do good work because I know me doing good work and being who I'm created to be glorifies my creator, glorifies my father in heaven. It glorifies my savior, Jesus Christ, and it glorifies the Holy Spirit who lives within me. Um, I'm actually working on a documentary right now called Scientific Evidence for Noah's Flood. Um, it's the third installment of a video series that I've been working on. Um, that quote that I gave you, that is one of the things that's going to be in there. So I have the top paleontologists of the 20th century essentially saying that the data does not support evolution. Um, and like he, he tried to waffle about that later on, but it's like, you said it. And you said it more than once. Um, and you can complain that I'm quoting you on it, but um, I'm not quoting you out of context. I'm looking at the context. I'm looking at everything. Um, like, there, there really is no way around this. Um, the evidence, you know, especially from the fossil record, doesn't support evolution. Um, the evidence in biology and molecular biology. Um, the only reason, the way you can make that support evolution is if you're really cherry picking your data. So, anyway. Um, I have good projects coming up. This particular film was $600,000. Um, the projects I'm working on are me on this rather expensive laptop, um, with some equipment, um, using stock footage that I'm finding online and using some wonderful free domain music that I found and I, I can't thank the people who made that enough. Um, I really want to put forward something good. If you would like to help me make this documentary, um, it's like I said, it's called Scientific Evidence for Noah's Flood, and it goes through 11 evidences for Noah's Flood. Um, you can support my Patreon. You can donate as little as $1, um, and you can have that be a one time thing, or you can have a recurring payment of $1 per month. If I had, if I had a 10 or 20 people donating $5 per month, that would be a huge burden lifted off my shoulders. Like I, I actually spend, I've spent thousands of dollars making green slug possible. Um, making this ministry possible has, it's, it's not a lot of money for a ministry, but for an individual, it, it is expensive. Um, I have some better software now. I have, better equipment and I I want to bring something good before the Lord and nobody watching this video owes me a thing Christians you don't owe me a dime but if you would like to if you would like to be part of this you know let me know you can donate to me on patreon um, and you can come beside me um, others of you maybe you don't have any money but you have strong writing skills and you can help me edit scripts um, perhaps you have time and you don't really have a lot of talent that might be relevant. Um, you can help me put captions on these videos so that deaf people and international people can understand them. And so there, there's a lot of ways you can help me make this possible. Um, you can help me to bring forth something good, you know, something good before God ultimately, because um, these videos, these projects I'm working on, where I'm writing a story, I don't, when I write my stories, I don't care about internet trolls. Um, I, they don't matter if for, for my fiction writing. I'm trying to start applying that to my apologetics of, you know, don't throw your pearls before swine. I want to put out good content, and if somebody wants to just mock it and walk away, that's their choice. Um, I provided them an answer. On some level, they know the truth. On some level, um, there might be a little bit of light there. And if they choose to suppress that, that's on them. In, in Spanish, there's a saying, you covered up the sun with your finger. And it basically is pretty self-explanatory, but it basically means you ignored the evidence that was right in front of you. Um, 
and we read Romans 1, the evidence for creation is very obvious. And so, since the Bible says that because the evidence of creation is so powerful and so obvious that men are without excuse to deny God, the Bible says that because of this evidence, you have no right, you have no excuse to deny God's existence. There is nothing else the Bible says about that. You know, so you have these past, you have, I've had so many Christians say, oh, well, you know, I, um, people will debate this, all this evidence for creation and that it doesn't work and you can't convert them. Look at God's made himself obvious from creation. And God says, because of that, people are without excuse to reject him. They can say stuff. They can mouth off all they want, but if they, you show them, Hey, here's, here's the bacterial flagellum, which is an outboard motor. They can sit there and say, oh, well, that motor made itself. Um, and there's no evidence that could happen. But they're without excuse. They can see the design. I show that to mechanical engineers all the time. Instantly, they recognize, okay, that thing in bacteria, that is designed, somebody made that. Because they know what it takes to make a motor. Um, especially making a motor that tiny, it becomes even more difficult. Um, not because you, know, you need very small instruments, just because things have to be so exact. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching this video. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this. I know it was long, um, but I really appreciate it. And guys, um, if you're going to do something, do something for the Lord, do something good. Um, I, I've kind, I'm kind of, now that I'm learning more, I'm kind of done with supporting Christian movies just because they're Christian. Um, and I'm way past you know, saying, okay, I'm not going to criticize a Christian movie, or I'm going to defend a terrible movie just because the person's in my camp, you know, to an atheist who can plainly see this is a terrible movie with terrible arguments. Um, but anyway, like I said, there's, I have plenty of content here on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Uh, check out my medium, check out my, um, check out my other platforms. Um, I'll put links in the description box. So you can donate to my Patreon. Uh, be sure to subscribe and you know click that little bell because you have to subscribe twice now on YouTube. Um, so subscribe, hit that bell, um, so you get the notifications. Check out my other content, and you know feel free to share this with your friends. Um, God bless, and uh, hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.